It's a weasel. Do you always sit like that? So good morning, folks. We're here in Medicine Hat, Alberta. We're just waking up early. It's uh, got up about 5 a.m. And we're about to hit the road. We've got to be in Okotox, just south of Calgary, in three hours to unload. Well, it's first come, first serve. But the sooner I get unloaded, the sooner I go and get reloaded in Edmonton, the sooner I'm on my way home. So I'm glad you're here. Hit that subscribe button. We make videos pretty much every day. You can follow us as we travel Canada and the United States, see all the scenery with me, and also get a lot of my useless opinions along the way. Love to have you as part of the club. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Parlay. Uh, links are all down below in the description if you want to follow me there. And I will, uh, I was going to say something else yet. I'm too tired. I'm going to wake myself up here, go grab a coffee, and uh, we'll get on our way. just got empty and typed in our next destination, which is our shipper in Edmonton. I'll show you where I am here. Okay, so there's North America, right? Canada, America. And we are right there. You see it? So that's my route. Okay, ah, sorry about the reflection. So we're going from Calgary. From Calgary there up to Edmonton. And then we're going follow this little thing in the middle here. We're going from there all the way back down here to Winnipeg right there. And we'll be at home. Another trip across the exciting prairies. This delivery didn't go as fast as I wanted it to. This is one of those deliveries Excuse me. I am not driving. I am sitting here talking to the good people. I'm off duty. Sneaky. She's being sneaky. What was I saying? Uh, yeah, this is one of those deliveries. They, they don't have a dock. They ordered 20 pieces on skids. And they don't have a dock. But we made it work, we made it work. We tied a bunch of ropes together and they had a Bobcat front end loader with the forks. So we pulled it all to the back, lifted it off and unloaded it that way. It just took a lot longer than it would have otherwise, but it is what it is. Sometimes there's no dock and you just gotta make it work. 
So we're in uh, Okotox, Alberta, south of Calgary. We gotta go through Calgary north towards Edmonton. We're not getting there any faster sitting here. So let's get going. You guys wanna drive? I'd like to have a nap. Well, let's do it, Diesel. Let's do it. We're gonna have to stop for a coffee, I think, on the way. What do you think? We wanna turn left here. Oh, this is gonna be a tight corner. That grass there. Oh, the Truman Show is in town again. Literally, the whole time I was talking to you, there was practically no traffic. Now that I want to get on the road, here we are. See, this is why I vlogged this stuff to prove to you that I'm on the Truman Show. That's what I should have called this vlog the Truman Show. This is the Josh Show. It's even worse. Here we go. This road for five kilometers. Of course, the scale's open north of Calgary. The scale's always open, just so you know. It's worth more of a mention when it's not open because that's more surprising. And I am empty, but once again, how do they know that? I always go over the scale anyway. There isn't any signs here that say empty trucks meters, oh come on Karen Queen Elizabeth the second highway highway two there isn't any signs that say empty trucks keep left a lot of scales do that but how do they know I'm empty they're, what are they gonna come chasing after me to make sure I don't, I'll just go over the scale whatever they need to read my my decals and my my numbers and plates and everything anyway make sure all my lights are working Sometimes they'll put the red light on so that you stop just so they can check your brake lights. I always wondered why they did that. In Ontario, they do that sometimes. You know, you'll be rolling through, green light, green light, all of a sudden, red light! And you'll like hit the brakes. You, what's that? And the green light will pop back on to let you go. I asked someone about that once, one of the officers, and he says, oh, well, they just do that to check your brake lights. Huh. Clever. They're getting smart, guys. Better watch out. At least they got a brand new Alberta and Canada flag there. None of them tattered, faded ones. So they're sitting in this building here just off to the right. They're looking at us. They're reading our plates. They're entering our information. I go past them. They read and enter all the information on the side of my truck. They're also looking at my weight, making sure I'm not overweight. Making sure I'm wearing my seatbelt, making sure all my lights are working. This guy on the left was supposed to uh, wait until I was out of the way so that they could read his, but they don't always do that. There you go, you should know that I'm empty now. But if you want to get in here beside me, you're going to have to get on this road for 116 kilometers. That's a U-Haul truck, man. I don't think you needed to come in here, but okay. Maybe he does. What do I know? So this is Queen Elizabeth the Second Highway. I've said it before. Uh, Manitoba, we also have a Queen Elizabeth the Second Way in Winnipeg. It seems whenever the Queen comes to visit our country, we rename whatever road her motorcade drives down after her. So when she comes here, she's always driving on Queen Elizabeth Road. They never do that for me, though I have requested. Never. Not one road named after me yet. We do have a street name in Steinbach named after our family name, though. There is a Giesbrecht Street. But it wasn't specifically named after me, though I'd like to say it was. Apparently you gotta have a crown to get roads named after you up here in Canada. Or you gotta be a very good hockey player. There's Wayne Gretzky Drive here in Edmonton. On our way up to Edmonton and... 
suddenly traffic came to a dead stop. So far, it looks like nobody plowed into the people in front of them, so that's good. It came pretty close. Not with me, with the people behind me. Uh, something happened up here, some kind of kerfluffle. I don't know why traffic, like, were people not paying attention? Why did, like, we came to a dead stop very quickly. Yeah, one lane was still open. Oh, people behind me got, uh... Oh, this guy's just pulling out here now. Ah, that was the last one he let through. Ha <laughs> had to block off the highway so that tow truck could turn around. Fascinating. That was interesting. Edmonton is the capital of Alberta. It's sort of, sort of close to central Alberta. Not quite in the center, but somewhat up there. It's one of the northernmost, uh, or is it the northern, big, or the biggest northern city we have, or the city furthest north? I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's a big city and it's further north than most big cities. And we gotta pick up our load here. They're waiting for us already, and this person decides to go slow in the center lane. beside me and I will go around you you don't want to do the speed limit I don't get paid by the hour I would like to do the speed limit if I can in some countries you know it's illegal to pass on the right like that there's no nothing like that here you can pass on the right if you want to it's just people should move to the right if they're driving slower than the rest of traffic that's common sense to common people, but not everybody can be common. Some people like to be unique and get in everybody's way. Like I was telling you like a couple of weeks ago, so many of these drivers, especially when you go into the big cities, the people in the big cities here, a lot of them, the only reason they got their license and got their vehicle is to get from point A to point B. They know nothing about how to drive. To Drive. Like they know how to turn the steering wheel left to go left. They know which pedal means go and which one means stop. Some of them know where the little blinky switch is too. Not all of them do. Half of them don't know what the high beams are. All they got their license and their vehicle for is just to get from point A to point B. And that's scary. There's so much more to I, I, I always call driving an art form. I mean, it's so many things have got to flow together and work just right so that you get to where you're going smoothly without inconveniencing everybody else on the road, without putting anyone else else's safety at jeopardy. You're getting there safely, smartly, and efficiently. That one was kind of up in the air. I probably could have gone through that one, but I made my decision. Here we are. If I would have gone through, you know you would have judged me. So there's downtown Edmonton all the way at the end of this road ahead of us. There's some big skyscrapers in Edmonton. Is that really, really tall one? Is that one new? Because I don't remember that one. Look at this guy's load here. Look at this. How heavy do you think this load is? 100,000 pounds? Somewhere in there? That's that's heavy. That's heavy. So we just got reloaded. Took a total of uh, 10 minutes. And I got some notes on my paperwork here. It says, uh, this load must be tarped. Okay. Done. So I guess this load uh, could have either gone on a flatbed or in a dry van. You know, a lot of the loads I, I hauled on flatbed when I was on flatbed, I thought to myself, huh, you know, they could just as easily put this stuff in a dry van and I wouldn't have to spend three hours tying it down, chaining it down, 
tarping it, stopping every three hours or every whatever down the road to check on it and tighten the straps. They just throw it in dry van. I mean, this thing's not in very good shape. Look at that. I didn't do that. I did not do that. Just so you know, some rusty old tire rims. But nonetheless, this took literally 10 minutes. I pulled out of the dock, closed the doors. This load must be tarped. Done. So there's a lot of freight that they put onto these flatbeds that they could easily put into a box like this. And I'm glad they did that this time. They should do that more often. Put that paperwork into the envelope where it belongs. What about 10 minutes? 10 minutes. Locked and loaded. Well, oh, stop dinging at me. I know, I want to go home too. Diesel, you want to go home? You want to go home? We're going to be home for a week, man. Unscheduled vacation coming up. So I booked this next weekend off for uh, fertility appointments and, and whatnot. Uh, and then this truck has to be safety. Now, tomorrow is the last day of the month when I'm filming this. So I know you get this a little bit later. It takes me a little while to put it all together. Uh, but this truck has to be safety and it'll be out of service on the first. So t I have to get back to the yard tomorrow, which I shouldn't have a problem. I'll have no problem doing that. But so this truck's out of service. They can't get it into the shop till probably Thursday. So I'm without a truck till Thursday. I, when I get to the yard, I'm going to be out of hours on my logbook, and I need a reset. I'm getting back Tuesday, so that means I'm out of service on Wednesday. So I'm out of service on Wednesday, this truck's out of service on Thursday, and I need to be home on Friday till the following Tuesday. I could probably leave on Tuesday, yeah. So, uh... It is what it is. It's not going to happen like this all the time, but we're going to take advantage of this time because I have so much I need to get done at home. I'm going to take you along for all of it. I just want to warn you that after tomorrow, there's going to be a lot of home time vlogs. And I hope you come and hang out with me as well. Uh, there's this, I like showing you stuff that I do behind the scenes and you know, not my, my life isn't all about trucking. I have a lot of other things that I'm trying to do and I've learned a lot from you guys in the comment sections when I'm trying to do a project and then you guys give me your advice and I read through it, I'm like, oh yeah, that would have been a much better way of doing that. And then next time I, I know a better way and you guys have helped me out a lot that way. But uh, a lot of home time stuff coming up. I'll try to do a video every day. Just sometimes when I'm at home, like probably won't happen this time I'm at home, but sometimes I'm gonna be honest with you. I am just a lazy couch potato. Sometimes when I go home, I just want to sit and do nothing for the whole day, and I can't make a vlog out of that. Those days don't happen very often, because usually I have tons to do, especially when it's summer and it's warm out. Tons to do outside. Those days usually happen in wintertime when I can't go outside anyways, because it's minus bazillion, and I will freeze my face off and other parts very quickly. I don't know where I was going with this talk. I know where we're going. Diesel. We're going home, man. Should be home tomorrow. Around 6 p.m. We're on our way east. You know, I'm pretty sure that it is seeding season. I don't know why there'd be a combine going down the road. Not quite harvest season yet, bud. But I guess he's getting ready. Always best to be prepared. Unless they're harvesting winter wheat, is that ready to harvest already? I don't think so because I don't see any golden wheat anywhere. It's all green still. Nothing's ready. I guess the farmers are getting bored. They're waiting for harvest. Well, we got 14 minutes left on our day and we're pulling in here to Radisson, Saskatchewan. We're going to end our day. We have another nine hours of driving to go tomorrow, so it'll be another full day tomorrow yet. But we have driven over 12 hours today. <laughs> it's been a long day. Look at all our bugs that we've gathered. Look at all of our friends that gave their life just to tag along with us. That's how much they wanted to come with. I told them, no, there's no room. 
You couldn't, you can't come with, but they said, no, I'm coming with you. And they splat right on the windshield. So now I'm taking them with me. That's a weird way of looking at it, isn't it? <laughs> I'm a weird one. Uh, where do they want us to? No, they don't want us to go in this entrance. They want us to go in this entrance back here. So we've driven 1,123 kilometers today from Medicine Hat to Okotox to Edmonton to Radisson, Saskatchewan. Catch you! Woo! Continue on this road for 30 kilometers. I'm excited. I'm sneezing all over the place here. Turn right and then turn right in 90 meters. All right, where should we park? I want to park off on the side somewhere by myself. I'm not going to block this access here. I think, I think I want to park along the edge. Oh, that camper guy's already taking my idea. Okay, don't want to block him in either. Oh, and that tanker over there took my idea over there. Well, everybody's taking my parking ideas from me. I should start patenting these ideas. Oh boy, I better not lose my truck in one of these potholes. Watch out. Hang on, everybody. It's a bumpy ride. See, I was gonna park right where that tanker is over there. How dare he? 